Welcome to this episode of Jeff's Journey. <laughs> First up, tattoos. Got that tattoo. And, oh man, that one. So, temporary tattoos for Halloween, Harry Potter based. All right, this one is the Deathly Hallows. All right, so the, the triangle is the cloak of invisibility. The circle is the stone of resurrection, the resurrection stone. And the line through the middle is the wand, uh, the most powerful wand ever made, the Elder Wand. <coughs> and then this one is, uh, got to get a little bit of an angle to see it there. That one is the Dark Mark of Dark Wizards. They're actually, they're both associated with uh, Dark Wizards to a certain extent. The Deathly Hallows more with Grindelwald, and this one more with uh, Voldemort. And Mors Modre, I believe, is the one that you, you call Vol Voldemort with. I just put these on earlier today, a couple hours ago. And so they're supposed to darken up over the next 24 to 36 hours, so they'll, they'll be a little bit darker. When I go to hand out candy, I'm going to hand it out with this arm, and then the kids are going to see that. And I'm not actually going to dress up. I was thinking about wearing a cape and stuff. Well, I might. I might wear, like, a black cloak, but I might not. And then, you know, just the kids that see it, they'll know. <laughs> be interesting. All right, in other news. Over the last handful of days, I've applied to a couple of companies because my work has gone down for the one, but it seems like they're way over hired teachers, so data was up to 11,560 teachers the last time I checked. Now they've been firing teachers <laughs> like crazy and not renewing contracts. I'm fairly safe because all my reviews are fairly good and I have a lot of heart ratings, a lot of star ratings, so I should be pretty good up until they get, they could probably fire like 9,000 people before they fire me. <laughs> and now that they've been firing all those people, my hours and students seem to be coming back a little bit. Uh, the one company went and hired me, Bling ABC, which is apparently launching out of Silicon Valley, I believe, no, that's wrong. Uh, Bling ABC is from New Oriental, which is a large Chinese education company that runs schools in China, and now they're finally getting online. and. I didn't like the fact that I didn't have a bachelor's degree, which is, you know, a normal thing. <coughs> they almost made an exception for my IQ level and the philosophy essays and stuff like that, but then they didn't. And another one, uh, Magic Ears, it's based on little kids is mostly what they work with. And they want you to be, like, clown-like, you know, like, no, nah! and, ah! and <laughs> I can do that a little bit sometimes, but not all the time, not so extreme. So I'm, I might still do it. I'm, I might still do that. I'm not sure. I'm kind of deciding. Well, I have to do it soon. I, if I'm going, going to do it, I have to submit. I have to do a second interview uh, to see if I want in. But I have to really commit to be in that, ah, at least for the interview, and then maybe adjust it when I go into the actual teaching jobs. We'll see. Health-wise, health has been up and down, up and down. Uh, there's some stability to it, but like this morning, I had a 107 heart rate, 107 resting heart rate when I woke up this morning uh, with a 143 over 87 blood pressure, which isn't bad. Left grip strength was 70 pounds, right was uh, 70.2, right was 69.8, which isn't bad for me. It's not great, you know. Really good would be in the 90s. Really bad would be in the 50s, the 70s, kind of medium. My joints were a little achy. That's from some stuff I ate yesterday and whatnot. I uh, tried out bone, bone ends in Wayall, and they have pretty good barbecue ribs, pretty good, at a pretty decent price, too. So, which I, I talked to one of their, their cooks, one of their chefs, to see how they make them, and they use, a, a, they use a pressure smoker for two hours at a very certain temperature, and then, you know, I, I got the, the whole thing. Uh, they were, I think they were as good as mine, and they had a lot of pepper in their, I think in their rub, they probably had a lot of pepper because they do a rub, and then they do the pressure smoker, take them out and let them cool back down, then they steam them to heat them back up, which is when they add the sauce, the liquid sauce, and I think the rub has a lot of pepper, and the sauce was so much similar to the one I use, I use Kingsford <coughs> Applewood from Myers. I think I'm going to add pepper, more pepper, and maybe some salt into my sauce and kind of see how that changes it up, how it tastes. We'll see. I did try pig's feet. I tried barbecued pig's feet, barbecued neck. 
And neither one of those experiments were great. The neck was all right. It just ended up being a lot of bone and <laughs> not that much meat around the, the neck. And then the feet were, yeah, they were like pure fatty, you know, skin, uh, not not meat, not real meat there. So ribs are still kind of the best. Although fairly often I've been getting pork steaks and I've just been barbecuing pork steaks on the grill and I don't do the boiling and stuff like that. So I don't end up with the broth. But I don't need it. I need to drink more broth. But still, you can produce tons of broth. It's you know I never have a reason to run out of broth. I throw tons of it out. So I've been eating barbecued pork steak sometimes because I just throw it on the grill, cook it up, barbecue it. It's easy. It's faster, cleaner. Da, 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 da. I've been thinking about what to do business opportunity wise. You know, with all the health stuff I've had, I thought, you know, maybe like a personal health coach, fitness coach could work out good. Because so many people, they, you know, they comment like all the weight I've lost and look in better shape and stuff like this. Like, I was really bad. Like, my health was really messed up with all my hormones and stuff. It still kind of is. I've been like 107 heart rate this morning. It's not, it's not like my underlying physiology is great, but staying in shape is not that hard. Uh, or it doesn't have to be that hard, you know, like I, and I, it, I work out like 20 minutes every 7 to 14 days, you know, probably 20 minutes every 10 days on average. Uh, it's not, not super hard, so, and a lot of people are just kind of amazed. I've talked to some people in some fitness groups, and they're like, you know, I'm going to get in shape, so I'm going to work out an hour a day. And I'm like, <laughs> like and then they're like, oh, I'm losing weight really fast, and I'm like, yeah, you're losing muscle. You know, <laughs> that's just not how it works. Uh, Last man standing, Tim Allen's comedy show is back, which is just the it's crazy how that thing was canceled by one network. Then, like over two years, they got to switch to another network and brought it back. The first episode was great, how they made fun of the network essentially for dropping them for political reasons, and that was awesome. And I also saw, I've never liked Roseanne, I've never liked Roseanne shows, but I know the Connors is on it. Don't watch it, I'm not going to watch it, I'm not even going to look at it for curiosity's sake. But I can't imagine the people that like Roseanne are going to like the Connors. And I saw just as I was flipping by it on my television setup that I have, that it has a super low rating. The Connors had like a 4.7 out of 10 rating, the lowest rating I've ever seen on a major television show. And that would be good. It would be really, it would set a good precedent if that show completely tanks and then Roseanne gets her own show on like a different network or something and it goes successful. And it would, I think it would help fight political correctness somewhat. <clears throat> I got a book by Jan Lindblad and it's Me and the Primordial. This is, this is a Swedish guy. I believe this book was from the 90s, early 90s. I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Uh, I got it in Russian, and then I had Google translate it into English, and it came out fairly decent. And then I had it printed and bound by a printer I know in Muskegon. And it's super interesting. It's on human ethology or sociobiology, uh, however you want to classify it like that. And he presents a different aquatic theory of human evolution, which is super interesting. I've also been reading some stuff on love and hate human body and human ethology by the founder of human ethology, Iranis Abel, Abel Spelt, uh, which is super good. Christian Leaders Institute. I was looking at this online, Christian Leaders, and I can't remember exactly how I came across it. Christian Leaders Institute, I was looking at it, they offer degrees online, stuff like this, super interesting. And somewhere on there it says, it's in Spring Lake, Michigan. Spring, I'm like, wow, this thing's in Spring Lake, Michigan. So I drove down to where they are in Spring Lake, Michigan, stopped by one day, and they were in the office, and no one stops by, it's an online couch, and talked to them. It was, it was cool, super interesting. I don't know if I'm going to actually do any of the courses through them, we'll see. It would probably be a decently intelligent idea, because I don't have degrees, and then I can get a degree through them, instead of 
like I'm just doing some courses through Cambridge University, but it's not an actual certification. I'm doing some courses through Hillsdale College, but they're not actually certifications. They're just for stuff that I'm learning. And through Van Dam Academy, Lisa Van Dam, which is a super interesting school out in California. I don't know why I kept thinking it was in Texas. I think Chuck Norris's grandkids or something go there. I'm most associated with Texas, uh, but it's in California. She offers some awesome courses on breaking down literature and stuff like this, so I'm doing all those. And if I would take that energy and focus it in a degree direction, that would probably be a smart move, but I probably won't do it. <clears throat> Sometimes I write down these little notes of stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, when whenever I make the next video, I'll, you know, I'll mention that. It'll be super interesting. And then I, I don't know what it means. Uh, YouTube speed. All right, I do know what it means. I watch almost all my informative YouTube videos on two times speed. And I see a lot of people not doing this. And then you spend like forever on YouTube. But if you take a 20 minute video you want to watch and you do it two times speed, you get to watch it in 10 minutes. And I watch almost everything at least in 1.5 speed. But most things in two speed, and you would, you'll adjust to it quickly. You'll adjust to it in the first 60 seconds. And then when you play something at normal speed, it will be slow. And they're trying to get to what they're saying. They're trying to get to their point. But you can process information way faster than that. And I don't know why more people don't do that. Hopefully a lot of people do do that. I mean, maybe that's why the option is there. I stopped by the Grand Haven Toastmasters group a couple of weeks ago. It's awesome because I've been I pulled out of the Muskegon group I, this last time for our renewal. I didn't renew. And my idea is to bounce around a little bit and to be less involved overall. But I stopped by the Grand Haven group. That was awesome. That was really fun seeing everyone again. And then the next week, I dropped by the Montague group, and that was a lot of fun seeing everyone again. Uh, so really awesome dropping because I hadn't been to those two clubs in quite a while. And I think the Grand Haven one in, in a very long time. And then this Last week, I went to the Muskegon one, and everyone was happy to see me there again, too, and that was a lot of fun, so it's I kind of like it. It's going well. It seems to be going pretty darn well. I went to Quidditch, a Quidditch tournament at Grand Valley State University, and there were a few universities there. There was Central Michigan University. There was Miami University of Ohio, which is just confusing that there's a Miami in Ohio, and I went and there was Wooster College, and I think that was all of them, and they had a tournament, it was a crazy thing, it was a cold, windy day, and this was a few weeks ago now, <laughs> but it, it's a pretty good sport, it's pretty decent, they don't get the best athletes, right, it's, it, that makes sense. But they had to adjust the rules and everything from the movies, obviously, because the bludgers don't really fly and the brooms don't really fly. So there's some limitations on it. The snitch doesn't really fly, so the snitch is a person that runs away. And he comes in 17 minutes in, and someone has to grab him. That is only worth 30 points in the game versus 150 points in the movies and the books. And then the beaters, instead of beating away the bludgers, those balls that fly and try to take people out, instead they grab balls and they throw them at people like dodgeball. And if they hit someone, that person has to run back and touch their goal before they can come out again. It's, it's really cool, actually. It's a fun sport to watch. It's treated more like an intramural sport now, but they have region, they have, this was just a uh, contest but it wasn't even a regional and then they have regionals which are bigger and then they have national contests and everything i believe the first official game was played at a college back in like 2005 so there's a united states association for quidditch and everything uh, grand valley grindelows is their name which is a water monster from harry potter and it's really cool so i want to catch some more of those tournaments this regional tournament that was happening like right about now maybe this last weekend was down in like indiana or something i didn't want to go that far but if they're in michigan uh, <laughs> i would like to go so that was, that's really cool do, 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 various other things that I'm probably not going to talk about. Oh, some various things that failed that didn't go through, which is interesting. Because I've had a bunch of times in my life that people mention all the 
stuff I've done. They're like, how do you do so much? And it's like, well, I try to do more, but most of it fails. <laughs> and then, uh, so the moth is a speaking contest. And I wanted to enter it, but I kind of like missed their season. And then I wanted to go to one. And there were two happening in Michigan, so I was going to go to the one in Ann Arbor. Neither were close to me. None of them were close to me. And so just before I was leaving that day, I called up just to make sure they weren't sold out. And, you know, because you don't want to drive a few hours across the state, get there, and then you can't go. And they were sold out. So that whole thing has fallen through, but hopefully in the future I'll get around to that. Uh, there was a company I was talking to, Remote Ties, about getting a job about writing about and editing things about remote work, which I thought I'd be perfect for, because for the last couple of years I've been working over the computer, teaching English online, and that fell through. I... <clears throat> contacted Hey Radio 88.9, the West Michigan area, it's out of North Muskegon. They're a Christian rock radio that I like, that I listen to, and I contacted them about volunteering. I'm like, I don't know, you know, something from home, I can like edit stuff, I can write stuff. Like, I don't know what you need, I don't know what a radio station needs too well, but I figured, you know, I could fill in some sort of small gap of data that needs to be processed, something. And apparently they don't know what they could have me do. So uh, we contacted back and forth a little bit through email. But so that's fallen through. I was doing reading tutoring through the jail program, the exit program in Muskegon. And my guy hasn't contacted me back after he got out of the program because we're going to continue with that. And so that seems like that's fallen through. And I think there were a few more online jobs that I had as leads that fell through, and then the teaching ones that are already mentioned. So, yeah, so lots of stuff falls through, tons. I mean, that's only a small portion of the stuff that I look into that falls through. But nevertheless, let's see. There, there's some other little stuff on here, some ideas and thoughts I've been considering, and uh, different fluctuations in my emotional regulation and whatnot, which is kind of interesting. I have had some more tinnitus recently, over the last week, uh, which is uh, ringing in the ears, and it's in my right, and sometimes it'll just go out. It's, it's kind of like the sound when the old televisions used to do, like, the test, which I don't know exactly what the test was for emergency broadcasting or whatever, and it would just be like, Ding! but it's only in my right ear, and it'll just go off for a little while, maybe a minute, like super loud, and then it'll kind of fade away, and then it just kind of like leaves an echo there for like a few hours. It's really weird. And then I still get some flashes, like black or kind of white. can't really see them very well because they're just at the very, very edge of my vision because that, they're just flashes. Uh, weird to describe, and uh, last a few times over the last few weeks, I've seen stars again, which I haven't seen in a while. Just a mix of stars, not a lot, not very bright, not very intense, didn't last very long, but nevertheless, and I can't remember the technical name for seeing stars, but there is one. I did have, this isn't related, but, <laughs> but it's going to come right after this, I had Nate adjust my neck for the first time a couple of days ago, so I had adjustment today, so last, last Thursday. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four days ago. It was the first time I had him adjust mine. It seemed to go fairly good, not as good as the other adjustments, but, but it's kind of a, a test and a plan because if alligator wrestling goes well, right? Which I have alligator wrestling scheduled. I don't know if I mentioned, <laughs> if I mentioned that. Maybe that didn't end up on it. I have alligator wrestling scheduled for November 6th in Colorado, Moscow, Colorado, most intense alligator wrestling in the country. They do geothermal heating to keep it all warm. I can't remember, like 80 something degrees, 85 degrees to keep all the water out. I, right, it's like a November Tuesday in Colorado for wrestling alligators. So I'm the only person signed up for that day, I do believe. So I might get a private lesson, which would be cool. It'd be like three, four hours, I believe. And I'm flying out of Muskegon, which round trip ticket to Denver from Muskegon I got for like 220 bucks, I think, which isn't bad. I'm running a car in Denver and then I have to drive four more hours. <laughs> but the ticket was so much cheaper that it works out pretty good. And I got a nice room at a, in a log cabin on Airbnb for 50 bucks a night. So 
and it's it'll be a fun trip. It'll be cool. And for like twenty bucks, they give you a USB with video and pictures from the whole alligator wrestling thing. So that'll be it'll be cool. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun. Also, I have had some issues with my router recently. I spent a few hours one day working on it and on the phone with Xfinity and stuff like that. And they finally couldn't fix it. And I ended up having to reset everything. They were going to send someone out. And then, like, if it was their fault, then you wouldn't get charged. But if it was something, essentially, you could have fixed, then you would get charged. Oh my God. And they just had no idea what they were doing. I had to reset everything and get that thing back to working. And, unrelated, but computer note, so I guess semi-related, Bud, one of Bud's friends, Mark, which was a 120, fairly close to me, needed some help with some cute computer stuff, so I helped him out with that, and I think he's pretty satisfied. So, that went pretty good. And then there's, well, a relatively big thing, theoconceptualism. I <coughs> have never fit into anyone else's anyone else's philosophy, anyone else's uh, sh structure, concept conceptual structure, anyone else's religion, can't, can't fit in. And, you know, it's, I've kind of known for years at this point that if I really wanted to fit in, or I've said actually for years that if I wanted to join a religion, I'd, I'd probably have to start my own. So I am. And I, <laughs> I published a, the first blog post on theoconceptualism. If you Google it, theo conceptualism. One word, right? Theo, God, conceptualism, concepts, right? Uh, abstract ideas. Mine is the thing that'll come up on everything except for one link on the first page of Google. I don't know why there's another thing on there. I made up the word and it looks like no one else has ever made up the word before. Nevertheless, uh, through conceptualism, I am working out more of the details of it. It'll be refined over time. But and that first one is just random notes that I keep to myself. Which I have pages and pages and pages of notes. I think I have like 11 pages of notes on this idea that I've been gathering for the last few years. And I thought, eh, why don't I try to structure that, organize that, and move forward with that. And a couple of people shared it in philosophy groups that I'm in, and some people are curious about it and interested in it. So, that's, I, and not a single person attacked me, which I kind of expected to be majorly attacked and ridiculed. One person questioned why I had Jordan Peterson in the notes which made no sense because Jordan Peterson talks about the balance between order and chaos and the symbolic structure of narratives and stories, so obviously that's why. <laughs> uh, so we'll see we'll see where that goes. Because I don't know exactly where it's going, but I'm gonna formulate it and organize it more. And if it takes on a good structure then, then we'll see if anyone else likes that perspective. But I believe that some people will, because I, I think I can make it pretty pretty strong, pretty solid. So we'll see how it goes. I believe that's all for now. I'm probably forgetting some cool stuff. Uh, John Ball Zoo has oh I am forgetting some cool stuff. Uh, John Ball Zoo has some Harry Potter events going on pretty soon uh, in November, and I want to go to those. That would be really cool. Maybe these tattoos still might be here because these a lot of times these. I don't know, maybe I should have put that at a little different angle. But these tattoos will stay around, they'll get dark over the next day or two, and then they should stay around for a few weeks, so I might still have them. And there's, let's see, handy daddy schedule of stuff that I'm doing. Well, I'm, it's getting busy here really, well, this next week. So, because I'm going to a football game at Hope. Uh, versus Kalamazoo Community College on Saturday, and then Monday I fly out to Denver, Tuesday I'm in Denver and Wrestling Alligators, Wednesday I fly back, and then, and I'm working that morning, then I'm flying out too, because I'm flying out in the middle of the day, that'll be an interesting trip. Oh, and then Friday, Saturday the 9th, I am going to Grand Rapids Comic Con, which should be fun. I've never been to a Comic Con, and I want to check that out, and the writer of the Aragon series is there, so, 
I've never read the Air Force news, <laughs> but nevertheless, it's interesting. I want to see his his panel. Hopefully, I can get into it. I haven't looked into the details of it, but I don't think you need a ticket to a specific panel. You just need to be in the room at the right time. I think. I hope that's correct. So, that should be really interesting. All right. More interesting things on the way next time. Until then, this is Jeff out. Bye.